We will call the November 9th, 2023 meeting of the Parker Planning Commission to order at 7 p.m., they tell me. Uh, and so would you please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Absent is Nick. Seated for Nick is Jane and Eric, and Eric is seated for Eric. Uh, so we have Eric Franz and absent and Eric Rieger seated. Uh, are there any additions to or deletions from the agenda? No, sir, there are not. Okay. Uh, item five, the approval of the minutes. Are there any additions or corrections to the Planning Commission meeting minutes from October 26, 2023? Do I have a motion to approve? Our motion, we approve the Planning Commission meeting of 26th of October, 2023. I second. Leland, okay. All right, it's been moved by Ileana, seconded by Leland, that we approve the Planning Commission meeting minutes from October 26, 2023, and I will call the question. Uh, Ileana. Aye. Uh, Eric. Aye. Ruth Ann. Aye. Jane. Aye. Leland. Aye. Chair is aye. Passes unanimously. All right. Item 7A, public hearing. Uh, a public hearing on the Crown Point Center PD Amendment 4, Assisted Living. And we will open the public hearing at 7.01. Ashley. Good evening, commissioners and chair. Thank you for having me. Um, tonight I'm presenting the Crown Point Center PD um, um, fourth, um, fourth Amendment. I always forget to switch it. <laughs> Excuse me while my tech clicker. We there we go. Okay, I can continue. <laughs> okay, this five and a half acre property is lo located north of Crown Crest Boulevard, east of Cottonwood Drive, and is bound by the north and the east by private drives. The Crown Point Plan development was adopted in, into the town in 1989 and was first platted in 2000. The PD was amended twice, once in 2001 and later in 2014, and was replatted in 2006. The applicant is proposing to amend the Crown Point Center PD map by expanding the planning area 6B onto the subject property to allow for assisted living and memory care facilities on the property in question. Shown on the screen is the current um, Crown Point PD plan and the subject property is hi uh, highlighted in yellow. Um, note that um, north is actually facing to the right on this, on, on this slide. Um, the rest of them north will be up. Um, so currently, the pro property in question is located within planning area 2B, which is the commercial office and hotel district. The Crown Point PD limits per permitted uses in the commercial office and hotel district to shopping centers, hotels, and motels, public facilities and other uses that support the medical district designated in the town master plan. Resident, residential uses, including assisted living and memory care facilities are not, per, are not permitted uses in, in this district. The subject property is um, bounded by vacant lots to the east and the west and by commercial uses to the north and south. The south is the, um, um, specifically, the south is the Advent Health Hospital and the anchor for the medical dis uh, district. The property was adjacent to the property on the right of the subject property is approximately 5.75 acres and is, all in, and is in planning area 6B.
The request for the plan development fourth amendment is seeking to modify the, the boundary between planning areas 2B and 6B. The proposed change would, would expand the planning area 6B and reduce planning area 2B by approximately five acres. Planning area 6B is lo lo located within the Commercial Office Research and Development District within the Crown Point PD. Planning area 6B does allow for some res residential uses a such as assisted living and, mem and memory care facilities and is intentionally located to the edges of the PD to, to allow for more intense commercial uses near the front of the PD and Parker Road. Expanding the the 6B planning area to incorporate the, the subject property will reduce the inventory of land within the commercial office and hotel district needed for commercial development as a part of the Crown Point plan development and the town's master plan. So the subject property is located within the medical and the E-470 corridor character era areas of the, two, of the 2035 Parker master plan. The medical district focuses on state-of-the-art medical care, preventative care, and wellness. Appropriate land uses include hospitals, medical offices, healthcare clinics, and facilities, rehabilitation centers, and hotels. The E-470 cor corridor dis district character area allows for higher intensity land uses without significant in uh, impact to the town. The proposed use for the property in question is a residential land use. Uh, residential land uses are not consistent with the intent of the medical and e in the E-470 corridor district character areas, especially when the subject property is at the center of a commercial devel development that is located near an, an intersection of two major road roadways. However, through a use not a use not itemized app application in 2014, the town town council approved assisted living and mem memory care uses in certain areas of the Crown Point PD, creating other zone properties within this crown within the Crown Point PD that can su can support the proposed residential uses. The proposed amendment to the PD is not consistent with the master plan. The subject property is also located within the Parker Road corridor planning area and, and is bound by the Parker Road corridor plan. The Parker Road corridor plan aligns itself with the 2035 master plan zoning and recommends commercial uses with the, within the Parker Road corridor planning area. There are nine criteria used to evaluate a rezoning application. These criteria ensure that uh, the need exists, the proposal is consistent with the master plan, and there are adequate services to serve the proposed site. All nine cri criteria must be satisfied for, uh, for staff to support a rezoning application. The review cri criteria are, listing, are listed on the screen above, and these are the and these are the only criteria through, through which this request may be viewed. After a full analysis, staff has concluded that not all nine criteria can, can be met by the proposed PD um, amendment. The first criteria, the need for the proposed PD uh, um, amendment is not needed due to the fact that there are numerous properties within the Crown Point PD and the town that, uh, that, that allows for assisted living and memory care as a permitted use. The second cri 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 criteria, the subject property is not the correct site for the proposed development due to, to the fact that there are other properties that allow for assisted living and me memory care as, as a permitted use that are not a key commercial location within the planned development. The fourth cri criteria. There have not been significant changes to the, the, air, the area that warrant a zone change. The Crown Point P PD was intended to allow for supporting medical and commercial uses and is still intended to develop in that direction. The eighth cri cri criteria. 
The proposal is not consistent with the town's master plans, policies, and goals because the, the proposal allows for a residential use within a, a major com commercial and medical district. After evaluating all of the zoning inf information staff has de determined that the proposal does, does not mean all does not meet all nine of the approval cri criteria set forth in the land development code. The full uh, analysis can, can can be found in the attached staff report. So staff has reviewed this proposal and has to determined that that all of the notice require requirements have been set uh, satisfied however all of the nine cri 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 criteria have not been satisfied and the project is not con 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 consistent with the master plan staff has received one letter in support of of the application and this 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 letter has been uploaded to the case file on tracking and provided to the commissioners tonight staff recommends that the planning com commission recommend town council did deny the crown point plan development fourth amendment and this concludes staff's pres presentation and i am available to answer any questions that you may have and the applicant is also here to answer questions. Questions for Ashley? Uh, Ashley, I don't remember seeing that letter that was in support. Do you have an extra copy I can see? Um, yes, I can get you that um, after the. Okay. A Ashley, do you have a copy there I can run to the copy machine? I don't have a copy on me, no. Can you access Tracker? Can I access it on the computer? Um, if you um, in track it, you can. Yes. Go to track it. That's where oh. I saw it. You can. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll go to track it. I think Stacy's going to run and grab it. I'm sorry. I'm. That's okay. Stacy's going to get it. I okay. Saw it. I saw it on track it. All right. Cool. Uh, Ashley, before we we can commence the questions, amazing presentation. Thank you. Very thorough. Thank very, you. Very very well done. Um. Yes. Any other questions while we wait? <laughs> while we're waiting for. So do all nine of those questionables have to be fulfilled or if one or two doesn't fit into the category? Um, all, all, all nine have to be, um, be able to be met, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, since we have time, Ashley, how would you respond to the uh, claim that the changing demographics creates a need changing demographics in Douglas County and in Parker over the next and what's projected actually creates a need for the uh, for this proposal yes thank you um I would respond to that saying that there are adequate um, properties that are zoned for this this use that can be developed in that way so that the rezoning is not actually needed to to rezone that particular parcel. And there are also quite a few of assisted living facilities within the, the town and the Parker area. Okay. Can you speak to, as far as the other ones that are already zoned for that um, usage of the assisted living, how, like how close they are to that, the proposed one? Yes, of course. Um, can I get to the presentation, Jeff? Um, on this map I have here on the zoning map, um, the two green properties to the right of the of site, those are zoned for the, um, met, um, the memory care and assisted facilities. And Ashley, I understood um, Eric's question a little bit differently in that um, I think what perhaps he was looking for, and perhaps what I'm looking for is where are the other assisted uh, living facilities in relation to Crown Point? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood. Actually, in, on this slide, the, the, the parcel that is to the right of the two green 
lots. That is an assisted living faci faci facility. There are other within uh, others within the town. Uh, there's most of them are are north in this area though of the uh, of the town. Ashley, may I make a quick correction? The property to the right is actually a rehabilitation facility. Okay. Um, up to the north, right off there, is an assisted living facility up by E470. Thank you, Brian. Ah, okay. And, Chair, if you'd like, um, we don't have to wait for the copies to arrive. I believe the applicant has a presentation. Okay. That can occur. All right. Uh, then, if the applicant will step forward. Uh, state your name and address for the record. <laughs> Good evening, Chair, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Steve Strom. I'm Vice President of Development with uh, Ryan Companies. Um, my address is 40 North Oaks. Um, in North Oaks, Minnesota. Great. First, I just want to, nice job, Ashley, on the presentation. I want to acknowledge just all the staff's great work, um, particularly Ashley and Stacy from the planning department. It's been a great collaboration. We've been working on this project for the better part of the last year um, and just want to acknowledge their, uh, their support. Um, also want to introduce a couple of my colleagues here briefly. Just over my right shoulder, my development partner, Melissa Deuce, and uh, Chris Tejan, who's our primary architect for the project. Chris will be joining me shortly to uh, share a few um, comments on the, the use in the, the conceptual site plan. Um, our, our presentation this evening is gonna focus on four main parts. Um, a brief introduction of Ryan Companies, who we are, um, an overview of the PD amendment, which Ashley did a nice job describing, um, a brief conceptual site plan presentation, and then we're gonna <coughs> talk about the merit of our proposal and uh, um, how that addresses the criteria in the code. So just briefly as a quick introduction to uh, the project team and, and Ryan Companies. Um, we're a national developer uh, made up of a about 2,000 member team. We have 17 offices around the country, including uh, here in Denver, which serves our Rocky Mountain region. Um, you know, despite our growth and our history, we started in the <coughs> 1930s. Um, we've always lived, in, lived by the core belief of always doing the right thing by our partners, our clients, uh, the communities in which we have an opportunity to serve. What makes us unique as a national developer is that we have in-house design. Um, Chris from our team is here today. Uh, construction, um, so we design, build, develop, and own our projects. Um, all of those services are in-house at Ryan. Um, just wanna talk a little bit about our senior housing platform and some of the other um, uh, products that we develop. We specialize in medical office, retail, multifamily, office, industrial, and senior housing. Um, flip to the next slide here. This just gives you a, some perspective on our senior housing platform. This is over the last 10 years, uh, the number of projects that we've had the privilege of, of doing, whether building or developing on our own um, in various parts of the country. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different types of senior housing we develop. Just a point of clarification. Um, the proposal before you tonight is, yes, it's going to be 100% assisted living uh, licensed. However, we will be offering independent living as well as memory care. So I want to make that clear distinction. I'll explain that here uh, briefly. I want to talk a little bit about our partner for the project, which is Grand Living Management. Um, Grand Living uh, will be celebrating 10 years next year, and they've been our partner on um, 13 other projects. Uh, the founders of Grand Living, Dan Paterka and Mel Seifert, before they started Grand Living, had 25 years of experience in senior housing. They are innovators in the industry. Um, they really wanted to create a distinctive senior housing product that was infused with hospitality. So as you'll see tonight, between uh, some of the, the concepts that Chris will share and as we talk about 
their personalized approach to healthcare, exceptional programming, luxury amenities, and also a, a very clear distinction in the marketplace is their unique aging community design, which does not exist in, the, in Parker today. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. So let me talk a little bit about, again, the licensing. So we are 100% licensed assisted living community. We are not a skilled nursing. So we're not similar to the product that's just down the street to our east. Um, to talk a little bit about the aging community benefits. So because our, our community is 100% licensed, when somebody moves in as, let's say, an independent living resident, we can bring the health care to them. We don't have to disrupt them and move them to a different unit in the building for them to receive that care that they need or to be relocated to a different building altogether. You see that all the time in our industry where you have a separate assisted living building, a separate memory care building, and a separate independent living building. We are 100% licensed. The one exception is that if somebody needs dementia or memory care, we need to move them into that wing of the building. So I just, again, wanted to make that clear. Um, that has been extremely well received and has been really a, a, a foundational piece to the success of Grand Living and why we are on project number 14. Um, I just want to, again, say thank you for the time this evening and on behalf of the partnership and some of the, the, the folks here in the room, but also all the Ryan team members that have been supporting this project, we're super excited about this opportunity and to make this investment in Parker. So just a, a, a quick high level overview of, and it actually did a great job um, to talk about the PD amendment. Really we're focused on explan expanding that area 6B by five acres. That entire parcel, if you will, that property is approximately 10 acres. So we're only taking the five acres in the back. So we're really leaving the front five acres closer to the center or main entrance to the Crown Point development in the existing um, uh, uh, zoning. Again, we have a tremendous amount of respect for the master planning process in the presentation this evening, but you know, we do share a different perspective on the amendment. Um, in short, there are some minor adjustments which we'll talk about, but the proposal does not stray far from the current intended use that's allowed for the property. Um, it's not an increase in density traffic above the current permitted uses and is highly synergetic as you'll hear with the surrounding businesses. Additionally, it will provide significant, a significant number of quality jobs, particularly in the healthcare industry, which furthers the town's medical district char character area. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris and he's gonna uh, share some of the specifics about the concept and site plan. Thanks, Steve. I'm going to bring the microphone down here. <laughs> um, well, thank you all for your time tonight. I would just echo Steve's comments to staff. You all have been very helpful just helping us navigate through the process, so I uh, appreciate that very much. I'm Chris Tijan. I lead the senior living design team at Ryan. I also lead the project team for this uh, project. Um, and take just a couple of minutes and walk you through the conceptual design, which is not part of our, um, you know, the PD amendment here but it does kind of illustrate why we think uh, the use is a good fit for the site. So first, just kind of looking at, a, at a overall area plan, um, Steve talked about the synergy of the different uses on the site. Um, one of the approval criteria talks about whether there have been significant changes in the area. And I would just share that over the last 10 years, or at least since the Crown Point uh, development plan was last am um, amended, uh, there have been significant changes in the senior living industry, which is kind of interesting. Um, one of the things that we've seen is that seniors and their families, they want to be where the action is. Uh, they want to be in a mixed use environment, and they're less interested in being back in a residential neighborhood or on a greenfield site. They like having the different uses uh, nearby. Um, in the town master plan, it talks a little bit about uh, land uses that support high quality of life. We have seen that with other Grand Living communities as well. Uh, just having that mix of uses nearby uh, has been really helpful. Some of the most successful ones have been near uh, grocery stores, restaurants, um, clinics like we have here, um, close by for families to, um, to be able to take mom and dad. Um, 
so here having, you know, the Lifetime, the restaurants, um, and the hospital across the street, the skilled nurse staying, those are all uh, kind of complementary uses to, to what we're talking about here. So zooming into conceptual site plan, and this is very early on, uh, but just wanted to give you an idea of what we're looking at here. A couple things to note, um, you know, some of the town guiding documents talk about um, buffering parking, uh, preserving open area, and, and prioritizing green space. One of the things with this use in contrast to, um, you know, retail or office use is there's less surface parking, so we have a little more green open space. We're able to buffer the parking a little bit more. Um, you know, for example, we're right down on, on Crown Crest Boulevard. Um, so it's got a little bit more of a, um, I don't want to say urban feel, but a little bit less suburban where the building is set so far back uh, with kind of a sea of parking in front. So Steve talked a little bit about uh, some of the amenities that, ha that Grand Levy has. I won't go into too much uh, more detail there. You can kind of see what, what they have there. But a couple of uh, points to make with that. Um, one, in a typical Grand Living community, about 35% of the building is amenity space and non-residential programming. And then in addition to that, they have a pretty significant amount of outdoor amenity space as well. So when you compare that to, you know, for example, the, the percentage of amenity space in a typical hotel, which we understand is an allowed use under the current zoning, it's actually a higher percentage of the building is amenities than you would see um, in a hotel, for example. The other thing I just want to touch on is um, community engagement. That's a big thing in the town master plan as well. Grand Living does a nice job of that. They will bring in um, farmers markets, they'll bring in performers, they'll bring in high school students. And so it's not just residents using the amenities, it's the community engagement uh, as well. Um, these are just a few images of uh, what some of those amenity spaces look like in other Grand Living communities. Um, it's kind of a higher end hospitality feel. Uh, it's a little bit different than a lot of senior living um, that we've seen in Parker and, and around the country as well. It's something that makes them unique. A um, couple things to, to mention, just going back to the aging community that Steve was talking about. So that is unique. Uh, that does mean that the whole building is licensed for assisted living through the state of Colorado. Um, and one of the things that is interesting about that, it, it drives a different construction type. And so um, it's a non-combustible construction type. This will be a metal building. Uh, so more of a commercial construction type than a residential construction type, similar to um, you know hospital, medical office building, things like that in the area. Um, you know, this is not exactly relevant to what we're talking about here, but in a lot of the other uh, communities where we've built grand living projects, because of the higher level staffing, because it's a kind of healthcare use, um, and because the whole building is not combustible, it has kind of pushed this into more of a commercial zoning. Obviously, Town of Parker is a little bit different, but um, just thought I would mention that. Um, just briefly on kind of look and feel, we haven't gotten too far down the road with that, but a couple of things worth mentioning for Grand Living. They have two main goals um, when they're uh, designing their communities. One is just having kind of this quality of design and character um, that you might see in like a resort hotel. Again, that's something that they feel um, sets themselves apart um, and is different than a lot of other senior living that you might see. The other thing that's important to them is really fitting the local character. Um, I think in the town master plan, talk about a, a hometown feel here. Uh, that is something that they look to do all over the country. You'll notice, you know, the images up here, they're all different. It's because they're in different places and they're trying to tie to uh, local communities. So those couple of goals, you know, we have um, built similar communities in mixed-use mixed use, high visibility districts like this. Um, and they just kind of give uh, the building a little bit more of a presence that just feels appropriate for those, um, those mixed-use areas. Uh, this is a very conceptual rendering of what a grand living project could look like here. Uh, again, preliminary, don't hold us to it just yet. Um, but we did want to mention a couple of things. One, uh, we would not be planning on asking for any variances from uh, the Crown Point Development Plan, so we're fitting within the massing setbacks, all the things that are called for there. Um, and then also working within the commercial development standard, so um, high quality materials. We've had a conversation with staff about that, about what would be appropriate there. Um, so making sure that we're, we're checking that box as well. 
So that's just a very quick overview of the design. Again, not, not part of our application, uh, but just wanted to illustrate why we think that the use uh, is appropriate for the site based on uh, Grand Living, the operators going there, um, and the type of project that we're envisioning here. So with that, I'll turn it back to Steve to talk a little bit about those criteria that you heard about from uh, staff. All right, well, now let's turn our, our attention to that nine, the nine criteria. So I'm gonna focus my remarks on the four particular ones that staff have called out that we do not meet. Um, you can see those four that are emboldened here on this slide, and I'll briefly touch on each one of those. So um, first of all, a need exists for the proposal. So I, I wanna appreciate the question Commissioner Nelson had about um, you know, population growth because that's certainly outlined in the master plan. Um, I wanted to illustrate that a little bit more and I'm sorry the colors are not showing great on the screen, but from a population change perspective for 75 and over in the city of Parker, that green shaded bar over the next five years is indicating certain age segments. So the first is 75 to 80, the next is 80 to 84, I believe, which is the highest. All of those segments are growing over 30% in the next five years, which is consistent with what was stated in the master plan that Douglas County is seeing some of the highest percentage increases in people over 65. I mean, that's dramatic. The tan, which again, you can't see the outline of that super well, but that's compared to Colorado. So you are outpacing the rest of Colorado in terms of the aging demographic within the town. So there's obviously a great need for additional senior housing par options within the town. Um, Ashley's statement was correct. There, there are existing senior options, senior housing options within the town, but I wanna call your attention to something that's quite interesting. So um, I'm gonna use a few, a few examples, but I'm gonna name uh, five, five communities within the town that are all over 90% full, okay? Property number one has about 190 90 units. It's 90% full and only has two independent living units. Otherwise, it's effectively full. Property number two has 130 units, it's 91% occupied, no independent living units, 10 AL and two memory care units available. And then finally, your third largest, property number three, 206 units, 97% occupied, two independent living units, two AL and two memory care units. I'm afraid most people that are in the market for senior housing and are trying to find something close to home in Parker are likely, likely having to look to neighboring suburbs to find the right unit in the right healthcare services. So I wanted to call your attention to that. Um, Parker, or excuse me, Specifically, I also wanna talk about this independent living because that's something that particularly Grand Living does very well. And it's a component that's not readily available right now in the market. Again, only two large communities offer independent living and there's only four independent units available. It's a key component to offering that full continuum of care, starting with independent living all the way through memory care. So. Again, only two communities in Parker offer that full continuum and there's very limited independent living in the market. Um, our proposal directly addresses that need. Um, adding a new senior living community will drive significant economic benefits and also population health benefits. Um, we know we're part of this medical district character area and you should also know we will employ approximately 150 employees when, we are f when, the, when the community is full. Um, those positions uh, will vary in terms of department le leaders in healthcare, nursing, hospitality, culinary, sales um, office, um, senior life enrichment, and various backgrounds. Um, again, evidenced by the low vacancy, our project will broaden the options for residents of Parker uh, to explore and um, again, fit within that character area. Also, the character area talks about state of the art. This is a very innovative model. That's why Dan and Mel broke off to start Grand Living is to do senior housing differently. So that personalized approach to healthcare and innovative aging community model is really important to them. 
Um, and I didn't refer to the table, but that's there for your reference in the bottom right um, in, the, in the deck. Okay, I'm gonna go to the second one. So is, the parcel, is this parcel the correct uh, site for the development? Um, we believe it is. Uh, we talked about the medical district character area. This property consists, consists of 10 acres, but we're actually only taking five of it. So the balance would still be able to be util utilized under that existing zoning. It's gonna promote growth in the district. We envision our employees um, using the childcare across the street, using some of the amenities, the services, going to a doctor's appointment, um, visiting some of the restaurants. We also envision all the families from Parker coming to visit uh, grandma and grandpa or aunt and uncle and taking them out to lunch or taking them out to a doctor's appointment. That's gonna promote growth that hasn't been seen there for a very long time. Um, this is a, a article I wanted to pull up and it builds on a point that Chris made, made earlier, but in our industry, the adult children are a big influencer of where mom and dad um, move, or aunt and uncle, et cetera. Um, over 73% of adult children influence where uh, their parents or relatives move. Um, it's really important to us to be located near these mixed-use developments. Um, we need to be seen, we need to be found, people need to find access to us, and we also want to comp be complemented by the surrounding businesses. This site does that. Um, the other part of it that, that's unique is similar to the form of a hotel. As you saw the, some of the conceptual renderings, the planned four-story community will be very similar in that form. So despite being a different permitted use in that zoning area, it will have, give off that appearance and that entrance to the Crown Point development <coughs> while leaving 50% closest to the main entrance to the Crown Point uh, development. Um, another really important thing with respect to uh, Parker Road and, and the, the I E470 district, you know, we want to make sure that the property is easy accessible from beyond Parker, so then relatives coming to visit, and then also EMS. We want to make sure that fire and life you know, safety can get to our community, and um, being tucked back is, is not, not desirable from that, to that extent. Um, next, just to talk a little bit about the significant changes. Um, Lifetime Fitness opened, uh, their grand opening was um, about 16 years ago. So this parcel has remained vacant since they opened. Uh, we've seen a lot of retail changes happen in the Parker market. With the arrival of Trader Joe's and Costco and some of the others, a lot of that retail and some of the other uses, the permitted uses that are desired here, have moved to the north side of E470. Another thing that's important to note is the demand for medical office has also waned. Um, a couple of the medical office buildings that are on the campus of the Advent Health Hospital, um, currently they're about 32% vacant, which is roughly about 50,000 square feet of vacancy uh, on that campus. So there have been changes in the market that have driven um, a variety of, of changes to retail, office, commercial services, et cetera. Think about the way that we shop today. Think about um, the way we have doctor's appointments and virtual appointments. Think about how we work and just how disjointed the, the office market is. Commercial real estate has changed a lot. Um, and it's important that the, the master planning document really to, describes about having broad and having a broad and flexible document that can, can evolve over time um, to those changes for the community. Um, despite those changes we described, uh, there's still a, a dramatic need for senior housing. And so um, that's why we feel so strongly that this is the right location in this medical character area district. And finally, uh, the fourth, um, this pro pro proposal, excuse me, is, is consistent with the master plan. Job creation is an important objective for the town and, and it's identified throughout. We talked about the 150 to 175 uh, primary jobs that will benefit Parker um, and keep those jobs in Parker and, and provide uh, those opportunities to residents. Um, this is a high, highly educated workforce that we can help retain. Um, 
The master plan also talks about providing a variety of housing options as illustrated with some of those graphs and, and uh, where the current existing uh, stock of housing sits. There's certainly a great need for uh, this type of housing and it's important for the town in its master plan that describes supporting that development of all different uh, variety types of housing. This zoning would be consistent and use would be consistent with the medical area district. Um, evidenced by uh, the property which is directly to our east, which happens to fall in that core district um, and, and is designated. It, you know, it, it, for us, it's, it's a jog of a line, if you will, to make this, this, this uh, unlock this property. Um, and again, it falls under that medical district character area. Um, with respect to the, the mix of uses and the synergetic uh, nature of it, it, this is exactly what you desired in the master plan to have integrated quality healthcare with facilities nearby um, that can provide the medical services along with the housing uh, to residents of Parker. So in conclusion, um, Clearly a need exists for our proposal. Uh, Parker's existing communities are full today and, and residents need to have a variety of housing options close to home. This parcel is, is unique and, and correct for our site and, or excuse me, for our development. It provides tremendous access visibility. It's synergetic with the uses that we described and it fits within that medical district character area. We talked about the significant changes in the retail and some of the other uses that are designated currently and how office and medical has, uh, demand has waned. And then finally, just the consistency with some of the things that this proposal provides with what's described throughout the master plan in terms of the variety of housing options and providing health, critical health care services within this district. So appreciate the opportunity and um, here to answer any questions. All right, uh, questions, and remember the, dis the item for discussion is the change to the PD. It is not the site plan. The site plan is not part of our purview tonight. Uh, questions? I have a question. Um, <clears throat> the, there is a parcel that is slightly larger than the parcel you're talking about directly to the east that is already zoned for the use that you're talking about. Yeah. Why is it so important that you be in the lot, in the, in the parcel that you've chosen, as opposed to one of the two immediately adjacent parcels that's already yep. zoned for your use? Yeah, I appreciate the question, Commissioner Nelson. Um, you know, in commercial real estate, you need a willing seller and a willing buyer. The proposal that's before you tonight is a willing seller that's interested in supporting our development at this exact location. Um, in addition to that, we talked a little bit about accessibility, synergies. It is a distinction where, where we're located or where we've proposed to be there and be proximate to the main entrance to the Crown Point development for people to be able to see us as they pull up, to be able to have the access to the neighboring amenities, to be able to walk across a crosswalk to a restaurant. Um, that is attractive for us. And to Chris's point earlier, we found success with that model in other parts of the country. So we have to remind ourselves that the average age of our resident is in their early 80s. So travel distances is a big deal. The farther we pull those buildings away from some of those amenities, it does make a difference. So for those reasons is why this exact parcel is the right parcel, we believe. Thank you for your response. May I ask a follow-up question? Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm hearing you say is that the reason that you need this particular parcel that you're proposing, mm -hmm. and that you're asking for us to switch the zoning on to benefit your proposal, is because of its visibility from the road, probably, from the hospital, probably. And I'm wondering if that's in particular the reason why we don't want this particular use at this particular um, location, because we want um, commercial to be in that more visible location. So can you address my concerns? Sure. 
Uh, Commissioner Lane, thank you for the question. Um, I understand the desire to have that use that's currently permitted there. Hopefully through the presentation, you've, you can acknowledge that the market's efficient and it has not, those uses have not gone there. They've selected other parts in the town to develop their restaurant or their office building or medical office building, et cetera. With respect to the, the first part of your question, um, sorry, can you repeat the first part of your question? Yeah, so uh, part of the, the need for this particular lot, as I understood what you said, is its visibility. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so visibility perhaps might be a reason why we would not allow this particular use in this particular location. And I'm, so I'm hearing a disconnect between um, the need and the reason why we should um, why we should rezone the property. We should rezone the property because you want this particular property because of the visibility, but perhaps we as a community don't want the visibility of this particular use in this location for that exact same reason. Sure. Got so it. I'm, I'm repeating thank, myself thank, because thank. I'm trying to be careful with my words, but I'm saying, uh, it, because of, this is a visible, highly visible location, yep. is probably the reason why it was chosen in the master plan to be a different use. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Lane, for repeating your question. Um, visibility is important for our residents, for our staff. We want to be able to be found. We don't want to be construed as another multi-family apartment building. Okay. So that that is. Just like retailers, just like every, everybody loves visibility in traffic, right? Um, my, my comment in response to not wanting to see us, I think the form of our building, and judged by the, the conceptual renderings, right, is, is consistent with some of the permitted uses, as, like a hotel, for example. So I don't see necessarily the distinction in not wanting to see um, a luxury senior housing community versus a hotel, a holiday inn, or, or something of that nature. Those forms, in my mind, are more consistent than they're different. Um, but it's not just the visibility either. It's, it's the accessibility to the neighboring adjacent properties. Think about you know, uh, some of our residents wanting to walk over to Lifetime and visit their grandchild's sporting event, or take in a you know, a class or um, wanting to be, again, meet their son or daughter at, at a restaurant across the street. Those travel distances are important. And again, this property is available. Those other properties may be permitted for senior housing, but not available. This property is available. And I would add, if I could, we are, we, we specifically took the, the back, if you will, or the eastern 50% of the property, which retains 50% closer to the main Crown Point Center, where you would believe those efficient users, you know, the way the market's efficient, they would desire to be at the main entrance to Crown Point, and you still retain that. Cool, I have another question. Um, and this question, I am very pro walking, very pro, um, uh, alternative transportation uses, and I saw in the staff report that there was a point out to the RTD that is uh, a stop that's right off of Crown Point and Parker Road. So I appreciate all of those things, but I'm wondering if the people who are going to be using this facility primarily, and if uh, walking a quarter mile is going to be a huge imposition, if they are not going to be using alternative forms of transportation to in just in general. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, our staff could certainly use that transportation. In fact, that many of them may use that transportation. Our residents, there's the majority of them do not drive. Okay. Um, the independent living residents 
they may have a car, but they don't use it that often. So I'm not anticipating a huge demand from our residents for that stop and for that uh, option, if you will. And we also, just to note, we also provide transportation as well. So we typically purchase a van and we can take residents to certain appointments and things like that, destinations, a mall, et cetera. So if I'm hearing you correctly, um, the reason why you need this high visibility location to be zoned uh, for your particular use is uh, also because the transportation needs to be accessible to the hospital across the way. And the users, the primary occupants of this particular building are not going to be using alternative forms of transportation. So in my mind, that quarter mile of the lot down the way a little bit isn't a big barrier to people who are already driving. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Um, in the uh, staff report, staff uh, made the statement, the assisted living and memory care use described in the project is residential in nature with few employment or economic benefits. What would you say in rebuttal to that? Thank you for the, the question, Commissioner Nelson. Um, we provide a lot of economic, economic and quality jobs uh, for towns like the town of Parker. Um, I described to you briefly the 150 to 175 jobs that we would hire as a part of this development. Um, those are jobs that are keeping Parker residents perhaps in the town and also visiting the neighboring businesses when they go to work supporting the restaurants when they go grab lunch or when they walk across the parking lot to Lifetime. Um, that is economic vitality and it's promoting growth by having those jobs and having those um, staff in the town of Parker. In addition to that, by keeping those 200 families plus or minus within the town at this location, Think of all the children, all of the grandchildren that are coming to visit that want to take aunt and uncle, grandma and grandpa uh, out for lunch or, or visiting some of the neighboring businesses after they visit mom and dad. Um, that's driving more traffic. And that was as part of our public outreach. Many of the adjacent business owners that I spoke to, particularly the restaurants, they would love additional traffic in the area that can help support their lunch and their dinner venues. Thank you. Uh, I have another one. No. <laughs> um, one of the comparisons that was made is that this is a, a hotel um, uh, office, commercial, and hotel district area, uh, where it's currently zoned. Um, and you made a reference to building your buildings, and they, they would have a profile similar to, uh, it looks like a very nice hotel. How would the employment be different in your facility versus in a hotel? Commissioner Nelson, thank you for the question. Um, with respect to health care, um, many of our positions are health care related. So whether it's nursing, life enrichment, physical therapy, wellness, that would be a clear distinction that would not be found in a hotel and that falls under, I think, that medical district character guide of driving innovative health care and services to the district. Those are the types of jobs. Now we have also department leadership, office, sales, marketing. Some of those jobs may be more consistent, but again, it's not, when we think about a hotel, you know, um, in the number of jobs that that's creating, it's a fraction of the 150 to 175 that we would be creating with this community. Thank you. I guess, could you provide some more color as far as um, you're talking about like the nursing jobs, those kind of jobs, what would of the 150, 175 would be that realm versus like the facility sales that you mentioned that would be shared among, you know, your hotel, your um, office, those type. Yeah. Uh, Com Commissioner Rieger, thanks for the question. Um, typically, we have 10 department heads. Uh, we'll have, and that can include, you know, executive director, sales director, um, accounting, uh, various, it's called kind of business staff. 
but then the majority of our employees are going to be the caretakers, the nurses. Um, again, physical therapy, wellness, program coordinators, um, again, really centered around the dynamic programming that we provide to our residents. So do we have a lot of corporate or office related job? We have some, but the majority is going to be more in that health healthcare continuum. And then one other question I had was there's a lot of conversation about there already being area zone for this usage elsewhere. And did you guys review any of the other areas available or that already is zoned in those? Yeah, Commissioner Rieger, we did um, scour the, the Parker Marker market for available property. And again, this was the property that was available and that we felt fit that uh, uh, criteria uh, that we look for in our locations across the country. Again, that has been successful for us in the past. Um, I will tell you, our first project that we did was tucked back near a residential neighborhood, and it, our lease up took a lot longer. We could not provide those jobs and that economic vitality because people couldn't see us and they couldn't find us. And so we've learned over time, over 13 of these communities, what locations work and what locations don't. I'm good. Further questions? Um, All right. Nope, I'm good. Thank okay. you. All right, then. Uh, thank you. And any additional questions for Ashley? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, Ashley, that first criteria, the need exists for the proposal, that question, that criteria could be taken as a proposal to change the zoning or the proposal to provide additional housing for seniors. Um, you could look at that need. Is that a need for which, which of those? Um, how would you respond to, uh, if, if I was going to say the need, do, the need does or does not exist for a proposal to build additional senior housing in Parker, how would you respond to that? tend to agree that there is more of a need as far as housing um, aging population but as far as the respect to the actual changing of the zoning I would argue that there's other places in the town that that can be provided for okay um, along the same lines um, Number four, the significant changes, there's been significant changes to warrant the zone change. Uh, applicant has raised a few different issues. Uh, a market uh, change in terms of what is needed for seniors. Um, office space use changes, as that area is an area that, that's currently zoned for office and uh, um, uh, medical services and um, hotel. And their claim is that there has been sufficient market changes uh, and sufficient buildup and growth north of E470 that that shows that there's been enough change in the area that perhaps an alteration in our zoning here is required. How do you respond to that? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I would respond to that saying that even though, sorry, I'm trying to get my Take my, your time. My ducks in a row. Um, <laughs> so even though the market has 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 changed, um, we as far as the uses in that area have not changed. As far as the medical, you know, restaurants and other and other supporting commercial, that it's still developing in the way that the master plan intended. So it's uh, that's why we classified it as not being a significant change. Okay. Um, another question I have is there are other proposals that come before us where occasionally staff will support a zoning change. Um, and the fact that, you know, that like, we need to adjust this zoning just a little bit this way or that way for this project to be able to be built. Uh, a sliver here, a sliver there. Is this uh, is, is part of the reason why you oppose this zoning change because it is such a large piece of property, five acres, as opposed to, say, under an acre? Um, could you support that a little bit more in terms of explain that a little bit better? Um, yes. Um, our, our main position for this is, um, is consistency as far as the changes in this PD that, I've, that we have already 
made recommendations on. So we are trying to stay consistent. So the size of the property is not a factor in this decision. Ah, okay. In this one. Um, that's all I got. Thank you. Okay. None other. All right, as this is a public hearing, uh, we will open the discussion to public comment. If a member of the public has a comment relating this change in the PD guide, uh, please step forward to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, Mitch Trevi at Trevi Commercial Real Estate, based here in Parker, Colorado, 10510 Vansfeld Road. Um, I've reviewed the staff report and, um, and I've listened to their presentation. I'm also familiar with their, their product type because they have consulted with me with regard to some of the better places in town. Um, specific to some of the comments uh, that were made not only by staff but also uh, in the presentation, as far as the availability of other land, we're in the, in the land business and we know which, which properties are available and which ones are not. And currently the, the properties adjacent to the, to the preferred site are not available for purchase. They, they might include that use in the zoning, but just because they're open and zoned for it does not necessarily mean they're available. Um, specific to this particular use, um, when I met and spoke with these folks coming in, um, I was thinking, okay, more multifamily, great. I, I don't want to be a part of that. But when they explained what they're bringing to the community is skilled senior care uh, and being able to capture not only the demand for senior care, but fulfill the demand. Because if we're at 92, 95, 98% capacity on the existing facilities, obviously there is a demand. Um, and if there's only a handful of units that are available for independent uh, living, there's demand for that. The quality of product that they're planning to bring to the community, though, is something that we haven't seen before. Um, and certainly, it's, it's got a, a large component of healthcare in it. But the age in place continuum of care is probably the biggest benefit, uh, allowing seniors to move in. And as their care needs increase, they can stay in their unit. They don't have to move. They don't have to go to a separate building. Um, so bringing that kind of quality product in close proximity to the hospital is huge. Um, but just as importantly, and I think one thing that's being overlooked is that, I mean, I was here when Crown Point was developed uh, and when the original plan came together. And I've seen uh, over the last several years how the north side has just really packed it in as far as all the retail and commercial going on. On the south side around the hospital, there's a reason why there's a lot of lots that are still vacant. They're not developing out as originally planned. Demand for medical office space has been severely reduced and really impacted since the pandemic. Um, when we've got 30 and 40 percent vacancies in medical office buildings, how long is it going to take for that stuff to reabsorb you know, with the new, new business models that you know, most medical practices have? So seeing that south side of, of Crown Point develop into additional medical office buildings, let alone commercial or retail, I'm not seeing it. And that's the business that I've been, and I've been in it for 20 years. So I don't see the vision for the south uh, portion of Crown Point building out the way it was envisioned and it's okay for visions to change, not only master plans, but PDs to look at, okay, what is the market speaking to at this point? Um, so I mean, there's plenty more I could cover, but the other issue is that I used to be your, your, your president of your chamber and I ran the Economic Development Council. Jobs are crucial. If this, if this entity is gonna bring 150 to 175 well-paying jobs to this community, that cannot be overlooked. Um, that's, that's a big portion of what it is that economic development is centered around. And if we've got an opportunity to bring jobs to this community and keep our seniors from being housed elsewhere, it's going to be very helpful. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Trevi. Seeing none other, we will close the public comment. Do we need any further information from the applicant or Ashley? I have a question, Ashley. So um, the current zoning segregates uses in a way that it appears that other communities perhaps do not. The applicant made reference to um, zoning where um, his f facilities like this perhaps might be considered more of a medical use rather than a residential use. And so I'm wondering, um, if you can help explain for me and maybe for the record why 
Parker has those segregated and why we can't um, tick the box and make this magically uh, fit into the approved uses. Thank you. Yes. Um, so our main classification, the reason why it is residential is because of the length of time that the patients or residents will be staying there. It's intended for the rest of their lives. It's not a short-term rehabilitation or medical um, center. So that's the reason why it's residential versus commercial. But as the applicant said, there are medical uh, facilitators employed or potentially employed by a proposed use. And so I'm wondering how we exclude those medical components as part of a medically centered area. Thank you for that question. Um, yes, um, that one is a little tricky. Um, I would, uh, yes, there is medical uses in that pr pr proposal, but it is, um, an overall deemed residential just because of the length of time that the residents will be staying there. It's not a short term. And if, if I may add, um, really it's kind of the difference about what the primary versus the accessory use. So it's the residents living there and they're, they're getting provided health care service. The primary use is the residents living there. The ancillary use is the, is the health care provider versus if you think about like a hospital, the primary use is the health care provision. It's people don't want to live there. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of the threshold difference. And, and, and maybe I'm um, needing some education here, but why is people living there across from the hospital different than a hotel? I mean, I just... I'm trying to understand from a physical standpoint and a like an easement process, it doesn't appear that much different, the form or potentially the form. Yeah, it, it this proposal, it like you said, it is very much a looks like a hotel, you know, but it's we, the primary reason is that we are looking for for businesses and commercial uses that need that visibility at that intersection. And you, you know, typically with senior living, you, you know, do, do your research and look up, you know, your other, you know, options before you make a purchase rather than you drive by a hotel and you're like, oh, we can stay there. So that is the main difference between the, between the two. And, and if I, I may add just kind of as a, as a thought, um, think about it as the difference between a hotel and an apartment, um, right? People are living there, but for different lengths of time and different manners. Okay. Further questions? No? All right. Then we will close the public hearing at 8.06. Uh, <coughs> Commissioner discussion. Uh, I'd like to, let me again say, Ashley, that I didn't ask questions because I thought your report was very thorough. Uh, as I commented to Bryce, um, it took me a while to get through it, but I really did. I went to track it and looked. I think, I, I, while I think import, it's important to bring jobs to Parker, and I think that's a point that's been well brought. I think what we're here for is the integrity of the master plan and to maintain and uphold that. And when criteria are not met, it's our responsibility to uphold that. So I am going to support the denial. Um, I will speak uh, in opposition to you here, Eliana. I'm going to um, speak against the denial. I think that um, each of these four uh, areas where there is disagreement between you and the applicant, and I think you did a masterful job and I think that you fully supported everything that you laid out very well. And this is in no way an indictment or saying that you didn't like make your point. You did. But I, I have a different viewpoint on some of these things, and I come at it from a different angle than you do. And this is why I think my opinions are different than yours. Um, the first one, a need exists for the proposal. I believe that there is a need for the proposal on one level, and that is... Uh, that we do need 
desperately more senior housing in Parker. Um, I also think that you know the need to change the zoning in order to make it happen, to me that follows from the need for the more housing and whether or not there are other parcels available and what percentage of this portion of commercial is being changed over, okay? Um, the second item you have is, that, is it the correct site for the proposed development? This was my major sticking point in terms of not, not disagreeing with the denial because I saw right next door there's these empty parcels and, and there's uh, the zoning's already there. So why aren't we just moving over? It's even a bigger parcel. But the point that was made that you can only build where you can buy and if it's not available for purchase, you can't do that. Um, I follow on with that, and, and it makes sense to me. And I, uh, for that reason, I think that uh, to build a senior living area, assisted living, memory care, so close to the hospital, I, I think that that's a good idea. Um, uh, significant changes to warrant the zone change. I think that the market has changed. I do not think that we're going to have a whole lot more office space going up. Uh, many the companies that specialize in office space are having tremendous trouble financially. I don't think we're going to be building a lot of just office space. I think that the medical model has changed for medical, and that, and that as a result, that 30% is going to take a long time to refill uh, across the street in those buildings. Um, and medical services uh, uh, will be provided within this, and I think it's part of a change in how we're going to be looking at how we provide medical services going forward. The model that they use is a model that, um, that I am familiar with in that it's one I wish my, my mother-in-law had available to her. Um, I'm thinking about where I would put my, my mom just got back from a 16,000 mile journey for three weeks in China. She's 86. Um, and she, there's no way she's ready to move into one of these places. But when she is, this is the kind of place I would want to, to have available. And I'm, and I'm like everybody else. I'm, I'm not that special. If I feel that way, I'm sure that many of the people I'm on this commission to represent feel the same way. Um, let's see. Uh, also, the, the build out north versus the build out south, they've become very different areas commercially. Um, back when this was all put into place, I think that there was an idea that much of what's happening north of E-470 was also going to happen south of E-470, and that hasn't happened yet. Um, it's become a place to go to nicer restaurants, which is very nice. I mean, we've got that really lovely restaurant row, and we've got a couple of new places going in, which are lovely, but it's not got that same kind of a vibe that you've got up where Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and, and that sort of thing. And finally, is it consistent with the town master plan? I believe it is. I believe it is because I think that the types of jobs that this sort of a thing would bring in would be so much better than a hotel. Um, I, I understand it. There's usually about 0.75 staff per room of a, an assisted living center memory care facility, whereas a hotel has maybe 0.4 staff. So same size structure you have more jobs. Not only that, but you have better jobs. Um, you have higher paying jobs. So I find that those tend to be um, uh, jobs that would be beneficial to the residents of Parker. Um, it is within the medical district. And again, I think that sense of holistic medical care uh, is, is very well fulfilled in this. So looking through it very carefully and parsing things out, again, this is not to disparage your work at all. I thought you did a very good job. You did a very good case. But again, the, the perspective from which I'm looking at it uh, is different. And so therefore, I would not support the denial. Thank you. I'll go next. Um, <laughs> I very much appreciate the um, applicant and uh, their interest in the town of Parker. Um, I do wish they had picked a different site. And I know um, one of our uh, members of the public uh, expressed 
his inclination that other parcels are not um, really available. They might be technically available, but not really available. And I, um, I'm under the impression that this particular zoning as it exists now was developed for a particular purpose. And I think if we wanted to rezone the entire Crown Point area where this proposal is proposed, um, this would be a different question than trying to spot zone for a potential use. And so I, while I appreciate the applicant and I hope that they do find a different spot in Parker because I do think that there is a need for this kind of um, facility, I don't think it's in the right location. And so I will be supporting the denial. Um, certainly appreciate the work done by both staff and the applicant. Um, to be honest, I had gone back and forth for whether denial or approval for this. Um, I think that you know we do have to consider the master plan and where it kind of sets out the zoning already and making an exception for you know a piece really changes what it was originally laid out for that the PD. So <laughs> for that reason, I am in support of denial. Mm -hmm. I keep going through a lot through my head. I've, I've read the proposals, pros and cons, and looking at both, and, and then I go back to the master 2035 plan and thinking in agreement with some of my commissioners about the location. I look at you, the one question I keeps getting in my mind is, would this be considered residential? this particular building. So what would happen if we rezone this as a res residential and then somebody else comes along in a same commercial area and say, well, you did it for them, so why can't you do it for me? So that keeps going through my mind. So because of that, I'm, I'm for the denial at this point. Okay. Uh, I, I, I have a, a, n a number of thoughts. Uh, I, I just heard the state dem demographer talk today that more folks my age, and I'm one of those close to qualifying for that facility, uh, are aging in place in their homes. Uh, and, you know, we are certainly in that position. And I think many people in Parker, now I don't doubt that there's uh, not any vacancies in the other, uh, having gone through that to put parents in those facilities you would take them wherever you could get them. And so I would, don't have any factual information, but I would suspect that many of the people in the uh, memory care or assisted living or any of those are not residents of Parker. Uh, many businesses in Parker can't find employees right now. And so, yeah, 150, 175 jobs sounds nice, but if you don't have the employees, they're going to have to come from someplace else. And the issue has been transportation to businesses here from places where those people want to, where they live, to be able to work here. And I, I, I do think it's, nobody here has a crystal ball. And to say, well, that's never going to happen. Uh, I guess I've been doing this long enough, too, that, it, you know, well, yeah, well, I don't, you never say never, and those zonings and those decisions were made with the, you know, the best interest of, of the town and the development at heart, and I, I think we, again, can't go around just willy-nilly changing them, uh, and so I am in support of the denial. Uh, anything further? Nope. All right, I'll call the question then. Uh, do we have a motion? I move Planning Commission recommend Town Council deny the Crown Point Plan Development Fourth Amendment as request does not meet the following approval criteria as listed by the town uh, by the town's report. I second. It's been moved by Ileana, seconded by Eric, that Planning Commission recommend Town Council deny the Crown Point Plan Development Fourth Amendment as the request does not meet the following approved criteria as listed in the staff's report. Uh, 
and uh, we'll call Ileana. Aye. Eric. Aye. Ruth Ann. Nay. Uh, Jane. Aye. Leland. Aye. Chair is aye. The uh, motion passes 6 1. Thank you. Sorry, the motion passes 5 1. Five one. I'm sorry. You to having seven people up here, <laughs> Councillor. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item. Uh, public hearing. Uh, it's on the zoning for the Pope property. And as soon as Stacy gets ready, we will. All right. I would like to uh, open the public hearing at 819. All right. Good evening, Chairman and Planning Commission. Uh, before you tonight is the Pope Property Zoning. So the subject property, known as the Pope Property, is an enclave parcel located in unincorporated Douglas County that is contiguous to the town. The property is approximately 38 acres in size. The subject property fronts 20 Mile Road and is bordered to the north by commercial uses at the Parker Valley Center, or Target, to the south and west by the Cherry Creek Open Space in the future Salisbury Park North, and to the east by commercial uses within the Flat Acres Marketplace, or Coles. The property and adjacent areas in the Cherry Creek Open Space contain environmentally sensitive land, including the 100-year floodplain and habitat for the Prebles Meadow Jumping Mouse, which is protected by the U.S. Endangered Species Act. The applicant has submitted an annexation petition that is running concurrently with the zoning application. The annexation is not before the Planning Commission, but will be heard by Town Council at a future date. The property is adjacent to the current town boundary and wholly within the town's planning area as set forth within the General Land Use Plan of the Parker 2035 Master Plan. The General Land Use Plan map establishes the future geographic boundaries of the town. The Parker 2035 Master Plan identifies the property as central commercial, medium density residential, and 100 year floodplain, and recommends commercial and open space uses. Further, the Transportation Master Plan recommends the Dransvelt Road extension through the subject property to expand the transportation system for greater vehicular, bicycle, and pedestrian mobility, at, mobility across Cherry Creek. The subject property is zoned A1 Agricultural 1 within Douglas County. Consistent with the Town of Parker Municipal Code, the applicant has submitted the zoning application that is running concurrently with the annexation petition. So the applicant is proposing to divide this 38-acre property into three different zone districts. Open space zoning, which is blue on this map, which will consist of approximately 9.2 acres on the western section of the property, which is within the one 100-year floodplain of Cherry Creek. Agricultural zoning, which is yellow on this map, which will consist of approximately 11.8 acres and is located in the central section of the property. This zoning will allow the applicant to continue those agritainment uses currently in operation on the property. And the third zoning is the Greater Downtown District Market Center. That is red on this map. This will consist of approximately 17 and a half acres consisting of additional area in the central portion of the property, as well as the remaining section on the east side of the future Dransvelt Road extension. All land proposed to be zoned Greater Downtown Market Center will be located outside of the 100-year floodplain. In addition, there are two small areas associated with the zoning that are already within the town. These parcels are currently zoned Greater Downtown Market Center. This property was annexed and zoned in the town as part of the commercial development to the east. As part of the proposed rezoning, a small portion of the existing lot will be rezoned to align with the zoning proposed around them. One piece will be rezoned to open space, and that is highlighted in red. That's about 0 0.028 acres, so very small. And the other will be agriculture, which is blue on this map, which is approximately 0 0.132 acres in size. So there are nine criteria used to evaluate a rezoning. These criteria ensure that a need exists, the proposal is consistent with the master plan, and there are adequate services to serve the proposed site. After evaluating the rezoning information, staff has determined that the proposal meets the nine approval criteria set forth within the land development ordinance. 
Staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan. Utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. All notice requirements have been satisfied. Therefore, staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Pope property zoning request. This concludes the staff presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have. We do have the applicant here tonight who can also answer questions if you have them. All right, questions for Stacy about the uh, rezoning? So, as I understand it, we have some property that's currently zoned one way, but we're going to change the zoning, not just because of the, this is stuff that's already in our area, already zoned. So can you support why we're changing the zoning now when we have, as a commission, not voted to change zoning previously? So the reason for this zone change is really just to be consistent with the surrounding area. So that property was brought in, the existing property that's in the town, was brought in as part of the Flat Acres Marketplace located to the east. It serves as drainage to that facility as it exists now. Um, as Dransvelt Road is developed and constructed, new ponds will be built, drainage is changing, um, that is no longer needed. And so, with this whole annexation and zoning, the portion of the property that is going to be zoned open space is within the 100-year floodplain. There is a trail there now um, that will be dedicated to the town to own and maintain. So that boundary in the little tiny portion that's being zoned open space will come over as open space to keep that boundary consistent and be dedicated to the town. Okay. The other small piece that's the agricultural component is just to keep the zoning consistent. It will be in the 100-year floodplain. Um, and just kind of designates what uses can and can't be done. Okay. I noticed that part of this project, um, there's a secondary access, privacy fence, another access, a drainage, something, a spur dike, a bridge, a wildlife fence. All of these are expenses the town is taking on as part of the this uh, project. Um, and that was disclosed as part of our zoning discussion, so I was curious as to why. So we use that map as like a greater map to kind of see what is happening with this property, because when you look at the 38 acres and you see just the zoning map, it doesn't make a lot of sense as to why we're zoning certain things certain ways. So that's a bigger map of what the town project is. So the Dransvelt Road is a town project. Um, there's negotiations in place as part of this project through the annexation on what is going to be dedicated to the town for Dransvelt Road, um, drainage, the spur dike, which is part of the um, drainage and improvements to Cherry Creek, and then negotiations with the applicants. So there are some expenses to the town. Um, they're all kind of associated with the project, not necessarily associated with the zoning, more associated with the annexation, but it tells that bigger picture. Thank you. Hi, Stacey. I'm going to um, pose some questions, probably more from my edification than perhaps anything else. But I noticed that um, the staff report mentions that um, some of the elevations will change based on the road project as it comes through. And there's no detail in the staff report about the mechanism for that or all of that stuff. And so like my engineer sort of brain comes in and says, hey, you know, here's all this missing data, right? So I'm assuming that all of the Town of Parker engineers are working on this and that I as a planning commissioner can trust that the town knows how that all works and that it all works with the proposed zoning. Correct. So we have looked at this, um, some people probably for too many years at designing this road, making sure it works. Um, this will be the largest or longest bridge in the town once it's constructed. So yes, the elevation is changing because you do have to get over the 100 year floodplain. And so you're raising that road up to create that bridge that spans that floodplain. And so it has been looked at and evaluated and reevaluated for many years. Okay. Okay. You know, I, I do have one question. You know, we're going to put in the Drenchfield um, road there, and then we have all this um, new stores and shops or whatever in this area. 
is the new road going to be able to handle all the new traffic and everything that's going to be coming from that? Yes, yeah, so that has been evaluated with this as well. So Dransvelt Road, uh, where it dead ends at 20 Mile is a collector road. It will continue south over to Motzenbacher as that same designation, which is designated to include a lot of traffic. Um, so I don't know the exact amount of traffic that collectors can accommodate, but it is similar to what 20 Mile right there is, um, Dransfeld as it exists through the town now. Okay, oh, yeah, thank you. I have one more question for you, Stacy. I noticed that um, the height level was set at, um, if I remember correctly, 60 feet or approximately four stories. And is that to be consistent with the rest of the zoning for the commercial area? So this property is proposed to be zoned Greater Downtown Market Center. That is a Euclidean zone district. So it's a zone district that is currently existing within our code. And so it'll be consistent with the entire area. Yes. Thank you. Stacy, does the applicant have a pres presentation or just is available for questions? It's just available for questions. Any questions for the applicant? No. Nope. Okay. Would you like it up? Oh, the applicant has a comment. Can he come okay. forward? Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, my name is David Brehm. That's spelled B-R-E-H-M. I'm with Plan West for Land Planners and Landscape Architects at 767 Santa Fe Drive. That's Denver, Colorado. It's probably the first time I've never had a presentation uh, because I, was, I think, assumed that everybody was pretty familiar with this property because it's been around since I was young, I always say, and uh, or younger. Um, you know, I don't have a presentation because Stacy was really thorough. But from a couple of questions, I'd like to, you know, add some thoughts and comments. But we're pretty excited because this is a fruition of a lot of work. Stacy underestimated or understated how much work has gone in through engineering and engineering and planning and law lawyers and planning and did I mention planning and design? <laughs> But, but, but the proof is, it's a pretty simple zoning. There's three different categories. It's really pretty simple. There's just a lot of pieces to it. And the little pieces that Stacy said with the zoning is only the tip of the iceberg. I think there's 27 different documents that have been signed and you know, documented about what property the owners are gonna give to the town. And you know, some of that zoning is gonna be dedicated to the town. And, and the right of way has all been dedicated. So that's a pretty, I don't know, 147 page annexation agreement or something like that, isn't it? So it, it's been thoroughly vetted and known. But the first thing is, is that this project was started because the town wanted to put the road through the middle of flat acres. And it's a good thing. The town benefits, the flat acres ownership benefits. This is, this is truly a win-win. Uh, for everybody, and I can't tell you how excited we are to see this come to fruition, and somebody, everybody is. So, you know, we are here for asking for your support and your positive recommendation to, you know, town council that will be in 10 days for the annexation and zoning, and uh, we're all looking forward to this, you know, coming to, to, coming to pass, and, uh, you know, again, I, I can answer more of your questions if you have any detailed questions, but it's been a pretty exciting uh, process. So thank you so much. Thank you, David. As this is a public hearing, we will, oh. I have one more. Good evening. My name is Mike Smith. Um, my address is 11321 Dransfeld Road. I live on the farm there. I have Flat Acres Farm. The farm has been in our family since 1948, and I've been managing the farm for the last 20 years. And I developed the pumpkin patch and all of the fun stuff that we got going down there. And we've been discussing this road project for 15 years, since 2007. And finally, the last five years, five in March of 2018, we got the discussions rolling 
permanently and discussing, you know, working on a, an agreement, the annexation agreement and everything, and then taking us five and a half years to come to that. And we finally came to a win-win agreement for myself and my family and the town. And it's going to really benefit the town. It's a transportation improvement project that we've been talking about. And the rezoning of the property is just kind of logical because of the road going across there. And it's splitting up my agricultural part, so I am have to downsize quite a bit. But it's time to move on, you know, and we, with the new zoning and the commercial aspect and joining the greater downtown district, you know, is moving on, the evolution of coming on. And, and it's right in the master plan of the town, you know, that's retail center. And with the road project, we got to be able to deal with the floodplain issue. And the road took a part of my farm out of the floodplain for us. And I dedicated the road away, right away to the town so they can build the road. So it was, it was a big benefit for all of us here. So, you know, I, when, like I said, we've been working on this for a long time. And David, his, I wore out his planning ability just about. <laughs> <laughs> we've been busy, huh, Stacy? <laughs> so, anyway, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Mike. All right, um, as this is a public hearing, we will open it up to public comment. Any other member of the public that wishes to speak on this item before us, please step forward and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, uh, we will close the public comment. Any further questions? All right, then we'll close the public hearing at 8.35. Planning Commission discussion. Yeah, I'm in support of this. This is uh, something that ever since I joined the Planning Commission, it's been talked about as, as what this is what we're going to do someday. And uh, to see that you've actually worked out how we're going to do it that day uh, is really quite nice. And I think it's going to work out well um, for the town. I think it's going to provide uh, additional areas for retail um, in that market area. Um, and I also am glad that we're going to still hopefully have the pumpkin patch or the maze or the other agritainment activities that have been uh, such a fun part of Parker for so long. I'm in support. I'm in support as well. I think it definitely moves forward and, you know, adds those added commercial space as well as the added transit through for with the road coming through while keeping that, you know, historical agricultural that comes with the town of Parker and our history, you know, present there. So I'm in approval of it. Yeah, I'm just excited about having that road go down through <laughs> and, and and making all the connections. Um, and just thinking of all the different jobs from all the new retail that's going to be open in that area is going to be really fantastic. And I do love your farm down there. I, I, I'm sorry what happened a few years ago, but um, I, I'm excited about the project and I'm for it. I agree with my fellow commissioners in that um, I will be supporting this project. I do commend uh, staff here and at Douglas County, yeah. actually, as well as the property owner for coming to an agreement that's mutually beneficial. Uh, like everyone else, uh, I'm glad to see this finally come to fruition after, again, it's been, I've been on the Planning Commission 10 years and it's been discussed on and off all that time. So anyway, it's, it's nice to come to some closure. Uh, we've got three motions. Uh, do we have uh, the first motion? I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Pope property, the Pope property zoning of approximately 9.2 acres to open space. I'll second. It's been moved by Ruth Ann, seconded by Jane, that Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Pro Pope property zoning <laughs> of approximately 9.2 acres to open space. I will call the question, uh, 
Elaine, Eliana. <laughs> it's past my bedtime. <laughs> Just call me Pope. Pope. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Aye. Ruth Ann. Aye. Jane. Aye. Leland. Aye. Chair is aye. Passes 6 0. Counselor. Then <laughs> uh, uh, the second motion. Do we have that motion? I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Pope property zoning of approximately 11.791 acres to agricultural. I'll second. It's been moved by Ruth Ann, seconded by Ileana, that Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Pope property zoning of approximately 11.791 acres to agricultural. Uh, and we'll call the question. Ileana. Aye. Eric. Aye. Uh, Ruth Ann. Aye. Jane. Aye. Leland. Aye. Chair is aye. That also passes 6 0. And the final motion? I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the, pro po the Pope property zoning of approximately 17.484 acres to Greater Downtown District Market Center. I'll second. It's been moved by Ruth Ann, seconded by Jane. The Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Pope property zoning of approximately 17.484 acres to Greater Downtown District Market Center. Uh, Ileana? Aye. Eric? Aye. Ruth Ann? Aye. Jane? Aye. Leland? Aye. Chair is aye. That also passes 6 0. Thank you, Stacy. All right. Next item. Uh, staff, the 2024 meeting schedule. We're waiting with bated breath, Jeff, for. <laughs> oh, okay. So I printed it out already. I always, I always look for you know when Valentine's Day falls and hope it's on a Thursday. Good, good news, it's not. Oh, darn. <laughs> so, so as as noted in your packet is the 2024 um, uh, meeting schedule. If I can get a motion to adopt that for next year, sure. that would be great. Oh. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I motion that. Uh, we accept and approve the 2024 Planning Commission schedule as noted in our packets. I'll second. It's been moved by Liana, seconded by Ruth Ann, that we adopt the 2024 Planning Commission meeting schedule. Uh, and I'll call the question. Uh, Ileana? Aye. Eric? Aye. Ruth Ann? Aye. Jane? Aye. Leland? Aye. All right. Uh, anything else, Bryce, for the group? I know, sir, there are not. Okay. Uh, then do we have a motion to adjourn? I motion. We call it a night. It's 841. <laughs> I second that motion. It's been moved by Ileana, seconded by Ruth Ann, that we call it a night. Uh, <laughs> Ileana. Aye. Eric. Aye. Ruth Ann. Aye. Jane. Aye. Leland. Aye. Chair is aye. Good night, all. Thank you.